So today's video is all about nervous system dysregulation. And we can start out by looking at the three different states, which I've mapped out here. Now, if we have a look at this first state where we're inside this window here, we can call this our ventral vagal state, or we might say we're inside of our window of tolerance. When I'm in my ventral vagal state, I may mostly feel calm and able to connect with other people. And that's because I have access to what's known as my social engagement system. This is made up of a branch of the vagus nerve that runs from my heart up to my face. And it's involved with other cranial nerves, but it will actually change the way that I express emotions on my face. So I will smile more with my eyes. It will influence how I listen. So when I'm in this state, I can actually hear or detect the sound of the human voice easier. And I will also have prosody and rhythm in my voice. So we know that parents do this intuitively with babies where they talk in a sing-songy voice to their baby. And that is to bring a form of co-regulation through the prosody of their voice. When I'm in this state, I'll be able to connect with people and my organs or my body will be regulated as well. So I'll be in the optimal state for things like digestion, for my immune system functioning at its best, for my endocrine as well. Now, when we face a stressor, it's normal for us to mobilize energy. So we get this shift up in our energy. Let's say we're driving to work and traffic is busy. And then we might come back down and then come back up. But we have this set point here. But when there's an acute stressor to deal with, we can then shift more up into this sympathetic nervous system state. And that's a very healthy thing to do. So we're mobilizing the energy to meet that challenge or demand. And we can say that this is our mobilization system. So we feel that energy come into our body. The vagus nerve actually withdraws and so our heart rate can speed up. We can feel the energy coming to our system urging us to take action and we might feel our palms get a little bit clammy if we move into fight or flight. There could be some tension in the jaw or in our hips. But afterwards, once that stressor is over, if we have healthy vagal tone, we will actually bring ourselves back down into this ventral vagal state and our social engagement system will come back online. Now, in the sympathetic state, we lose access to the social engagement system. So our voice may become flat or monotone. We may notice that we can't detect the sound of the human voice as well. So this makes learning and conflict and negotiation quite challenging. And then we lose that expression, particularly in our upper face. So we may have a little bit more of a flatter face. Now, if a stressor continues and I can't use my sympathetic nervous system state to move past it, if I continue to escalate, then I'm going to fall back to my third line of defense, which is known as the dorsal vagal state. And when I move into this state, I will notice that I get an immobilization. So my energy actually drops right down. I may feel a sense of collapse or for some people they freeze. So we can have freeze or shut down here. Now in this state, it's also common for us to feel a sense of dissociation from our body as well. And it may be very difficult for us to take action. And this is our body's way of protecting us or taking care of us because it actually releases endorphins, which up our pain tolerance. And psychologically, it's protecting us as well. So when people say, well, why didn't they take action or why didn't they do something? It's because of this dorsal vagal response. And that's actually the most common response to have in a traumatic situation. In the dorsal vagal state, we also know that it's very difficult for us to communicate because we lose access to the social engagement system altogether. And we also know that when we have more activation in the threat center in our brain or in our fear circuitry, 
we actually lose access to an area called the Broca's area, which is on the left-hand side of our brain, and this is our primary language center. And it takes what we feel, and it's how we express it with words. So it's very difficult in this state to speak up or to take action, and that's purely because of physiology. Now, the way we move between these different states is a process called neuroception. And this actually happens outside of conscious awareness. So it's not something that we're choosing. But neuroception will be shifted by what happens in our life. So if we have periods of chronic or traumatic stress, it can actually shift our set point away from the center of the ventral vagal state or our window of tolerance. So let's say we have a stressor and we mobilize the energy to deal with it, but we don't get to recover fully. And then we have another event and another event, or we get something that's traumatic stress, but we don't get to recover fully from it. We shift away from this baseline and our set point can move closer up towards where the edge of that window of tolerance would be. And so then I'm oscillating up into the sympathetic state quite a lot of the time, or I might, might oscillate around here where the dorsal vagal state is. And when this happens, what we see is that something called allostatic load accumulates. So allostatic load is the wear and tear that's accumulating in the mind-body system when we have chronic and traumatic stress. And this can show up to impact on things like our immune system, our endocrine system, digestive, musculoskeletal, cardiovascular. It really can impact on every system in our body. And when that set point of our nervous system has shifted, what we might say then is that we are dysregulated more towards hyperarousal, where there's increased sympathetic activation, or for hypoarousal. Now, if my nervous system becomes dysregulated towards hyperarousal, this is like the on button is stuck or jammed. So I may feel like I've had too much caffeine and there's this mobilization through my system that's telling me I need to take action or I need to go faster. So we may feel like we need to be doing more, being busy. Our thoughts may sound like you need to go faster, you need to hurry. And this can lead to having a lot of anxiety and feeling overwhelmed or agitated. We may also feel more irritable and it can show up in our relationships where we might snap at people, blame or criticize. This can also impact on our physical health. So we may see that our digestion is impacted, particularly towards chronic constipation. We may experience insomnia where we have trouble getting to sleep and then staying asleep as well. And we might find that we fall into these patterns of using artificial ways to regulate our nervous system, like working too much or using alcohol to try and wind down. We might get lost on our phone as a way of distraction. On the other hand, if I move down more into hypoarousal, where I'm dysregulated for hypoarousal, it's a little bit like the off button is jammed. No matter how much we try and use motivation or willpower, our physiology will win here. And we know that in this state, there is more of that immobilizing energy. So we may find that we feel flat. We may find that we have burnout. Symptoms may present like being foggy, forgetful. We may have a loss of libido. We may even feel clumsy, that we sleep for long periods of time. And when we wake up, we just don't feel refreshed. So it's a little bit like symptoms of chronic fatigue syndrome can present here. So it's possible to be stuck on on or stuck on off, but it's also possible that we oscillate between the two as well. Allostasis is a process that can start working properly again, where although we do have the mobilization in our system, we can recover fully from it again. Now with dysregulation, what we'll find is that any time that we get triggered, we find that we get stuck up in that sympathetic state for long periods of time, 
experiencing anxiety, anger, reactivity, insomnia and gut issues or we get stuck down in the dorsal vagal state where we feel flat, shut down, apathetic and we might feel like our situation is hopeless. But the key is that in those challenging times, we create a new experience in our mind-body system. And a lot of that has to do with building that vagal tone and learning a new way of responding. Although we may think about trying to use mindset work or thinking more positively, this is physiology. So we need to come into our bodies and work with what's happening there. So each time that we learn to come back into this ventral vagal state, we're effectively moving that set point back into the middle of the window of tolerance. And that's what then what we will oscillate around. So we don't get stuck at the extremes. Yes, we'll still have these fluctuations. And it's through the principles of neuroplasticity that we know that we can change our nervous system. So neuro means nerve and plasticity means to change or that it's malleable. And we can take this one step further to say bioplasticity because when we change this, we change more than just neurons. We change the immune system, the endocrine system, our gut health, our inflammation in our body. And that can be what gets to the root cause of so many stress-related conditions. If we've had these chronic symptoms that don't have a medical explanation and that get worse when we have stress or when we have periods of emotional dysregulation or nervous system dysregulation, we may be seeing that this is what is the root cause of the issue. So if this is something that you'd like to learn more about, I'll pop below details of our upcoming trainings.